everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to another awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. You guys are in for a great treat today. We have Sam Regal with us, voice actor, writer, director of Sophia the First on Disney Junior, the number one show right now. Yeah. Exciting. Exciting. Before we get to Sam, how about a tip of the week? Well, the tip of the week today is all about the email signature. Mm. Now, you may think that this is something that everybody already does, but apparently no. not. Um, <laughs> let me start off with a little story. Okay. Um, just yesterday, a matter of fact, somebody had emailed me, but in their email, they misspelled their email. What? Now, exactly, when I read their email, um, at the end of their email, there was no signature. There was no name. There was no email address. There was no website. There was no way no for me. No social media. No. Nothing. So I just shot them an email back, and it's you know it got delivered you know unsendable because the email didn't exist. So with that said, is this email signature so 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 important that you guys are at the end of your email that every single email that goes out has to have your name, not your initials, yeah. your name your email address, your web address, a phone number, a way for everybody to be able to contact your you. Your Facebook I, or your Twitter. Something. Absolutely. It's a little All, piece of marketing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it gives anybody a way to get back to you quickly and easily by just looking at, at that email signature. Not everybody is doing this and you mm. need to do it now. Okay? There you go. Okay, you guys, our guest is a versatile voice actor, director, and writer for anime, video games, and cartoons. He is the voice director of the hit Disney Junior show, Sophia the First. He is also known for his voice acting work as Peter Parker in the amazing Spider-Man video game, and as Riven in Winx Club on Nickelodeon. He is also the co-host of the podcast All Work, No Play with voice actor Liam O'Brien. Are you ready to get buzzed with the triple threat? Sam Regal. Here we Sam go. Sam Regal. Oh, wow. Dude. The triple threat. <laughs> triple threat. Welcome to VO nice Buzz to Weekly. <laughs> First of all, I got to tell you something. Yeah. I am so unbelievably impressed because, and I'm not impressed easily. No. She'll know that. Um, sure. Stacy does extensive research on our guests. So, yes, yeah, she does so know more about you yes, than you do. do at this point. Wow. Um, and she was briefing me on who you are and all that you have done. And I gotta say, man, that I was like, "Are you serious?" He's like, there's, "This is are no we talking way about the same guy? that this anybody same guy? can do all that." Yeah. You know, I mean, and it's it, and I was just blown away. So we're so excited to have you on the show, man. Well, thank you very much for having me. I uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I love the space. I love uh, I love you guys. Thank and uh, you. he loves us already. I Why already. This is going it's well. <laughs> um, but no, uh, yeah, you're you're right. I do a lot of a lot of different stuff and. I don't know if it's because uh, I'm good at things, or maybe it's because I have a crippling fear of of getting fired, and <laughs> so I have to like keep keep doing whatever I can do in yeah. any field. But whatever it is, it seems to be working. I, as you were saying, I, I write, I, I do some voice directing, I do a lot of voice acting, and you know, it's fun to just do different things every day. Like every day I get yeah. to do something new and that's great. I don't have to go into the same office every day, which is yeah. awesome. Variety well, I mean, is the spice of life. Absolutely, man. I mean, but the difficult thing is, I mean, there's a lot of people out there, I know a few of them, that do a lot of different things in life, but they're not really good at any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's me. Okay. Maybe no, that's not you. Me. That's not you. Because the thing here is that you're looking at some of your work and some of the stuff that you have done, it's like this guy is really, really good at everything that he does, man. And that's the impressive part. We're going to stop bragging yeah. about Sam right now. We're going to get into wow. some questions. Well, take us back. I mean, you started as a child. You've been performing... Your whole I life think so we all started as children. Yes, yeah, pretty true. much. We did. Stacy <laughs> probably didn't, but everybody else did. I haven't grown yet. I'm still waiting. I'm just cheating with the stilettos. But um, uh, take us back to how you ended up here in sure. the voice of a business. Well, I start uh, as you said. I started as a child actor, um, doing like local theater productions when I was. I think I was an Oompa Loompa in Charlie and the nice. Chocolate Factory when I was like four. You were four? Yeah, I did my first professional show when I was eight. <laughs> I did. Wow. Uh, I was in Oliver at the Lazy Susan Dinner Theater in Woodbridge, Virginia, for ten bucks a show. All right. Ten uh, bucks? That's like prime time. Oh yeah, yeah. for an uh, eight-year-old. That's like yeah, actors' yeah, yeah. equity yeah. rates. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, and I did uh, local theater, and then I eventually got in uh, the national tour of Les Misérables when I yes. was like eleven, twelve. And I moved to New York to do uh, the Broadway production of Sound of Music when I was like fourteen. 
And so then I lived in New York and was like a, a young New York stage kid going to auditions. <laughs> and I don't know what this is. It's but that's good. What it's I was Hollywood, doing. baby. It's like, <laughs> I was doing it. Yeah. Um, and uh, took a little break for college and had like a normal college. And then mm-hmm. as an adult, um, you know, performing, writing, doing whatever I can to to be creative. Yeah. Um, and I kind of fell into the, the voice acting world um, because I don't know if you can notice, I have a very uh, clear speaking voice. You do? Yes, you do. And so I got hired to do English learning tapes, like for Chinese and Korean like students. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it was a lot of, the ball is red. What color is the ball? That kind of stuff. Nice. And across the hall, basically, they were auditioning for a cartoon series. And I walked over there and I, I got it. So that's I how I kind of What series was that? Uh, it was a show called Yu-Gi-Oh, which is a big, Yu-Gi-Oh. big hit anime mm-hmm, show. Anime, yeah. yeah. Um, and that same company did the teen, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Fox, mm-hmm. uh, for which I played Donatello yeah. for like seven years. Yeah. Um, See, I told you he hasn't even begun yet. Yeah. So, so yeah, but that's that's yeah. pretty much current. So I mean, I, I, that I I became a voice actor and never looked back. Um, you know, I still can act with my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facting. Yeah. But, uh, facting. <laughs> you know, there's that. acting. Yeah, face yes. acting. Um, but I I mostly work in the voice world now, and it's it's so cool. I get to play parts that I never would have played yeah. uh, as a, you know, physical actor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, was so that great. was that the dream? I mean, when you were when you were obviously you didn't even know what voiceover was probably yeah. when you were ten. But as you started to grow. Did voiceover ever hit your mind and go like, wow, maybe I, that sounds like something I'd yeah, like to Yeah, I mean, do. there are, like, some people have that dream as a young boy. I don't think I was smart enough to realize that, oh, these are actors who do the voices. So yeah. I, I wasn't smart enough to think that that's something that anyone could do. Um, but, yeah, of course. Like, I loved cartoons growing up and uh, and the chance to work in any way associated with any cartoon yeah. is mm-hmm. just incredible. And I kind of have to pinch myself every day uh, that I get get to go in and do silly voices or or help other people do silly voices uh, for cartoons. It's great. Well, you talked about you were Gavroche on my list. I was Gavroche. One of my favorite musicals of all time. Um, how do you think those, I mean, obviously those live performance experiences, there's no take two, there's no, it's got to, you're in the moment. Mm-hmm. How do you think those experiences as a performer have helped you today as a performer and even as a director? Uh, well, uh, you're right. You can't, there's no take sees back sees mm-hmm. on stage. So you kind of have to um, learn what you're capable of uh, really quickly and uh, how to use all your tools, of, you know, effectively, your voice or your movement or whatever. Um, and you got to be confident and, you know, it teaches you all kinds of good practices, rehearsing and knowing your material and knowing your character and all that right. stuff so that when you get in there or get on stage or get behind a mic or whatever, um, you know, there are take twos in yeah. voiceover, but there, there also aren't like the first time you get in front of someone new for an audition or the first time, like if you're a new actor coming in and you finally get like a chance to walk into a studio and like show them what you got. Right, right. There is no real take two. You gotta hit it the first mm-hmm. time or else you won't be asked back to audition again, even mm-hmm. if you don't get the part. Um, so you gotta kinda bring it. And yeah. and live theater really s- teaches you, you know, that skill. Yeah, yeah. So, like, now, make it does, count. does that happen, what you just talked about, where Uh, somebody like yourself or maybe a group of other producers or directors that might ask to see new actors in the business and audition them that way? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, Casting, we're always looking for fresh voices or people from the comedy, stand-up comedy world um, or improv world Mm -hmm. or, you know, all the, we're we're always looking for new voices because, you know, you don't want to hire the same person over and over Mm -hmm. and over again because... You know, Unless the they're your buddy. <laughs> well, I would love to just work with the, with the same people um, uh, all the time. But yeah, no, we're always looking for new for new talent, and it's it is amazing. Sometimes um, you'll find like a really awesome stand up comic, and you see yeah. them live, and then you bring them in for like a voiceover audition, and it's like, ooh, not, not oh, so they long. they should Doesn't have practiced or something, <laughs> <laughs> or, or it's, it's <laughs> something so, sometimes, yeah. yeah. But other times they come in, and it's like, wow, they were born to do this, or 
more likely they've done the work mm -hmm. and they know they've also done acting classes or they've also done whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they know to bring it. Exactly. Yeah. In your opinion, professional opinion, because this is what you do, when somebody comes in for one of those auditions that sure. we were just talking about, what, what makes it a great audition for them? Like, it's tough to say. I mean, every audition is a little bit yeah. different. Yeah. We're looking for different things. But, um, you know, uh, uh, what separates a, good, a great audition from just a good audition, I think, is um, really bringing yourself to the, to the character. And, um, you know, a lot of times people will get sides and it's, um, they'll try to do what they think the voice should sound like, which, I mean, I guess is what we're all trying to do. Yeah. But um, it doesn't come from an organic or natural place like they're putting on a, a voice, like a silly voice or something, or uh, and that's like kind of all they're doing. Mm. They think that just putting on a silly voice is enough to, to get you into cartoons or whatever. And, you know, it helps to be able to do lots of different voices or accents or whatever. But um, I think the, the comedy, or if even if it's a drama, like the characterization has to come from you, like be a representation of 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 a mood that you felt or something that makes you laugh or um, a teacher that taught you as, you know, in elementary school that you yeah. thought was funny and and that is a part of you, you know. Right. Just from a natural organic place rather than like, I'm going to do kind of a, I don't know, a Ethel Merman voice yeah, or exactly. whatever, you know, yeah, like yeah. then you're just yeah. putting something on. Whereas if it's like somehow channeled through an honest place, I guess. Like that's your for more life of like experience. A, yeah. yeah, or yeah. more, or uh, is it more of like an acting thing? Like you want to be, you want to. Yeah, you, you got to be a good yeah. actor first, uh, first and foremost, and be able to realistically convey, um, you know, whatever the emotion of the scene yeah. is. Mm -hmm. But um, but then yes, uh, on top of that, finding a character that that speaks to you and that's funny to you and that you can do without, you know, losing the truth. Of, yeah. of what you're trying to bring to it. Now, I'm, I'm going to stay on this for yeah. one quick Please. second. In in, a, in, a, in an animation session or an animation, a new series or something like that, you might work, are natural voices more popular than, say, really super character-y ones right now? Right now, yes. Uh, natural voices mm -hmm. seem to be the trend. And, you know, it doesn't mean not animated. Like, there's yeah, yeah, still yeah. animated performances, right. but um, typically, like especially the stuff that we've been doing at, at Disney lately, like um, not a lot of people uh, are going for like a really pushed cartoony read. There are some cartoony cartoons out there sure. still yeah. and I love them. Um, but uh, for the most part, sticking closer to your natural range is is helpful. Is helpful. Yeah. It's a good place to start. Yeah. That's I mean, a good tip. Yeah. Because <laughs> this guy directs that stuff. <laughs> well, also it helps like, you know, guys like me, mm -hmm. um, I like if my voice is a piano. Oh man, I don't know where. Go with it. Go I with only, it, Sam. I can really only play like an octave. Like my voice is a high pitch, <laughs> sort of a little nasally voice, and I don't. I can't do the trailer voice. You just did it, I but can't. it's okay. No, I can't do that, <laughs> yeah. and I can't do a million accents. Um, I, I can you do any accents? <laughs> Jack. <laughs> See, I'm just proving to you guys that you, there's <laughs> there's hope. Okay, I I can do some, but they're so okay. stereotypical and awful. He's like, am I being awful. punked right yeah, now? Yeah, no, no, no. no. I, I, they're you know. No, but you have your skill sets. Yeah, but but so within like this small range that I can that mm -hmm. my voice goes in, um, I'm I'm really good at that. Right. You know, and I and I hone in on that, so um, I can. I can do young heroes and young nerds and young uh, psychopaths or whatever. They're mm -hmm. all usually young uh, <laughs> in some way. But um, but I can really hone in on, like, that's what my, my voice is good at. And um, and that's what I'm, as an actor, good at. And I, I find a, a still a lot of variation within, a, like, a smaller yeah. range. Yeah. And it still serves me well. Yeah, so. That's great, man. And that, what a great lesson right there. And it's that thing. You don't have to be don't this to guy that everything. does a gazillion yeah. voices, but really hone into what you're really good at and become great right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's Absolutely. ultimately when people are coming into an audition and then auditioning in front of you, you want to you want to be blown away. You want yeah. to see acting. You By want that to see thing that they do. That thing mm -hmm. that they do. And if they do more than one thing, 
that's great too. That's great right. too. But but if if they bring in, you know, this is this is me. I'm the young voice guy or whatever. Right. Or I have the big trailer voice guy. Check it out. And they kill it. And it's like, whoa, what a powerful, booming voice. Right. I don't care what else he can do because I know he can do that really right. well. That's fantastic. Well, and you get the character breakdown, and you know, it's like you were saying earlier about bringing yourself to it. I mean, if you're standing there trying to think, what do I think they want? Yeah. Then you're completely outside of your body it's and death. you're not giving them your best. So you can't predict because maybe you guys don't know what you want or maybe it's kind of that you'll know it when you hear it. Of course. But regardless, unless you're leading with yourself, I mean, you're putting Absolutely. If a breakdown part. says, like, you know, a Woody Allen type, so many people just try to do a Woody Allen uh, impersonation like, and yeah. no one can do it that well. I mean, you'll always hear Woody Allen's voice. Yeah. And, and yeah. So... Um, so when I read stuff like that on sides, I just kind of ignore it and think, oh, they mean he's neurotic. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I'm not going to try to do an impression of anyone. I'm going to do my neurotic guy that I do because I know, A, it's, it's pretty good, and B, I can do it yeah. on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. And C, it's, like, it's, it's funny. Like, it's funny to me, which is yeah. funny. And, like, sometimes that's good enough. If it's funny enough to you to put right. down on tape... And if it makes you laugh, mm -hmm. then odds are it'll probably make the guy listening laugh, too. Mm -hmm. And if it's not perfect for that part, then they'll remember you for the next one and be like, oh, that guy who did the really bad Woody Allen impression, but it was really but funny. It was really yeah. funny. Yeah. I'll, I'll get him for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, we I like get that. this question a lot from, from viewers over the, the months. The, the age old, how long, you guys obviously hundreds, maybe thousands of auditions for a role or a series. Sure. How long do you listen to that audition? Do you get past the slate? Oh, like do as a casting person? Yeah. Uh, no, I listen to, I mean, I listen to a bit. How many seconds? <laughs> 6.2. 6.2. No. Uh, no, it depends. If it's good, longer. And mm -hmm. if it, really the first line, everyone listen, look, I'm, I'm looking at the yes, camera like you told good. me to. Yeah. Um, no, uh, <laughs> If, if, if people are out there listening and they're going to be auditioning for things, really make that first line count. Like, mm -hmm. uh, really make the first line uh, the perfect example of that character that mm. you want it to be. So spend more time on the first couple lines of the audition, and then you can kind of run through and the rest, too. drink, have a <laughs> drink. Arrested. Because if that, if that first line is great, yeah. and it's like, oh, wow, that's good acting, the voice is the right age and yep. type... Um, I'll keep listening for the whole thing, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, but if it's like an old man and he's auditioning for a fifteen-year-old boy part, I'll, you know, Not I won't good. I won't give it much <laughs> yeah much time. Much right, thought. right. Yeah. How do you stay connected to what's happening out there right now with the trends? Uh, you mean world trends or voiceover trends? Voiceover trends. Okay. Yeah. Because world trends, I don't know. We don't even is want One to Direction talk a band yes. that's popular? Yes. Is Justin Bieber? I can't we won't keep do any track. History quiz. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, actually, good. Justin Bieber just joined One yeah. Direction. Okay. Good. So no. Okay. Um, so uh, because I'm an actor, I feel like I get I get out there a lot, and um, I feel like if it was, if I were just voice directing yeah. on shows. It would be a little insulated, mm -hmm. like I would only be working on my shows, so right. I would only know how my shows work. Mm -hmm. um, but because I'm also acting, I get to work on other people's shows and see how they're doing it right and how they're doing it wrong, and I can, uh, you know, bring that knowledge into the shows that I'm voice directing on, um, and sort of share the knowledge that way. But. Um, I like to share. Yeah. He doesn't steal. Yeah. He shares. No, I share. He's a good guy. I share. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, uh, and I also do some some writing, so I I get uh, that perspective as well. And I feel like my writing work has really helped me like figure out what what like the sides, because sometimes you get sides for mm -hmm. an audition and there's not a lot of description, mm -hmm. yeah. so you kind of have to look for clues of like what might be, oh, this seems like the end of the episode lesson that he's saying here. Like, mm -hmm. if we all got to stick together, you know, like, oh, okay, so I'll, I'll play it like it's that moment at the that end of the episode when he, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So writing sort of helps me figure out the intent of stuff, mm -hmm. um, and writing also helps me as a voice director, like to figure out what the intent of the writer was in the script that I'm trying to get out of the actor. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the diversity of what I do sort of keeps me 
Current. exposed mm -hmm. to the yeah. new trends out there. And also I teach classes sometimes, which you do. I do. I we teach. didn't read that. That's another thing he does. <laughs> Holy Toledo. He has a spare 15 minutes. Yeah, you know, like that's the 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. <laughs> yeah, what they have to does this happen? Uh, you know, I do, I do some like group seminar -y stuff every once in a while. Okay. And I have a studio in my, in my home. Mm -hmm. It's not as cool as this place, but um, it's pretty cool here. I mean, it's amazing. It's the crush velvet. It's, um, yeah. I do have some crush velvet, but Excellent. only in my booth, not in the <laughs> whole thing. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, some people come over for like privates and stuff, yeah. um, private lessons, and that exposes me to new t some new talent too, which is always nice to see Absolutely. The, the young yeah. whippersnappers yeah. coming out of, fresh out of high school, Absolutely. Yeah. off the turnip truck. <laughs> I don't know. Well, speaking of the turnip truck, <laughs> what do you think, um, what do you think it takes for someone to really be successful in the business today? Somebody who's starting out. Well, if I had to start out, I don't know how I would do it. Like, I don't right. know. I don't know how the. I don't know how they do it. I, I was always an actor forever. Mm -hmm. So, um, so when I, like after college, started acting again, uh, I already was kind of good at it, and I already had contacts. Mm -hmm. So I was starting with an advantage, mm -hmm. and then when I moved from New York to Los Angeles. I already was on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I already had an agent. Again, like huge advantages. Huge. I wow. didn't have to look for those things yeah. out here. Um, but if I had to start with no credits, no skill, you know, or you know, a novice skill yeah. and no agent, man, that's that's tough. It is tough. I, mm -hmm. I feel for these people. Um, but I would just say the advice that I give most people um, is that other actors can can be your best asset like mm. uh a lot of my a lot of work even now comes from other actors recommending me for mm -hmm. stuff so in classes making friends with people even if it's not voiceover related if you're at a improv class at ucb or or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. um making those connections and doing web series for people yeah. um you because you don't know what those people will go on to next Exactly. And they'll refer you. Which is why he right. did our show. Yeah. Because we might be able to hire we'll him in the future. We'll put the, uh, refer the referral. You know, we could be his next gig. <laughs> uh, just in case. Okay. Just, um, no, so uh, actors can really help other actors um, a ton. So, and and it, when it comes time to find an agent too, like mm -hmm. if you say to your actor friend who has an agent already, mm -hmm. like, I've got a demo. I, you know, I'm not going to straight up ask if you can walk this demo into your agent, but if you ask your actor friend who has an agent, like, where do you think I should send this demo? Then maybe they'll say, oh, you should send it to my agent. And right. then they've made a great yeah. offer and, and yeah. you can get in that way. Exactly. Or even get their opinion if it's something that you shouldn't be even sending out in the Absolutely. first place. Other actors who have been working more yes. are certainly fonts of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um but even now, like I'll be in a session and someone I'll be walking out and they'll say, oh, Sam, who does a good French accent or whatever? And I'll be like, oh, this actor and this actor. And then they get work. There you yeah. go. Yeah. But I think that's just sort of, um, that's part of the voice of our business. Voice actors are very generous about helping each other and, hey, listen, I can't do that, but I know who can. I think it's, it's weird that unique. way. It, it is weird. Versus the on camera side, which can be weird. very different. Yeah, you know, on camera so. is cutthroat. Yeah. People outside of auditions trying to trip each other, trying to jab each other with shivs. <laughs> it's crazy. There's. There's fights everywhere. They're like, no, pulling. I'm just getting the character of the game. Oh, it's ah! crazy. Yeah, and yeah. you know this from experience. Oh, man. <laughs> the scar is almost gone. It's tough it's out true. there. It's true. Yeah, no, no. We got to love it, man. This is a yeah. beautiful industry to it be is. in. And, uh, and yeah, everyone's really supportive. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I think because there's, it's a smallish community mm -hmm. and there's, there's enough work for, for uh, you know, a, a good amount of people. And so if I don't get something, uh, on this one, and you do, or whatever, I'll, I, I know that I'll get the next one, and, and, yeah. and so person. on. Yeah. yeah, so it's all good. Wow, was that awesome or what? It was. Sam Regal rules, that's all I gotta mm -hmm. say. That's all we have for today, everybody, but be sure and tune in next week for part two, it's gonna be awesome. You don't wanna miss it, and between now and then, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. Take care, everybody, and just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.